In the previous lesson, we learned about bar graphs and histograms, which are a great way for us to show the number of responses that we get in a survey. The two types of graphs we're going to look at today are great ways to show relationships between two data sets. You've seen this one before, a line graph. There's one thing in the, the uh, definition here that I want you to highlight or underline. A line graph is a special type of graph that shows what's happening to data over a period of time. Um, so again, it's a relationship between the data set, between the, the two sets of data. One of those sets of data is the, the time itself. Um, so for a line graph, uh, you've all made one before. But one thing uh, to keep in mind, remember that, um, well, I don't know if you remember this or not, but the independent, the independent variable always goes on the x-axis, and the dependent goes on the y. So you got to think here, between year and salary, which one is going to be independent? Which one is not going to be affected by the other? The answer is obvious. The year is not affected by Mr. E's salary. You're not going to say, oh, it's, he's, he's making 58000 It must be 1995. And he took a pay cut, and now he's making 42000 We must have went back in time 10 years. It doesn't work like that. So what we want to do here is, is we want to put years. Years is always going to be on the x-axis, because no matter what, years and time will continue to progress whether or not uh, his salary goes up or down. That's true for any, any uh, line graph. Always put time on the x-axis. So that means, obviously, we're going to put salary right here. Okay? So years, we've got 1985, 1990, 1995, 2000. Um, we're not going to treat the y-axis as, uh, as zero because we're not going back to zero AD. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put 1985 here. But maybe what we want to do to show that we're not starting with the y-axis being zero, use that little squiggle mark there, which a lot of you forgot the name for. It's called a break. Um, so we'll put a break there. And we'll put 1985 here, we'll put 1990 here, 95, and 2000. Okay, let's lay. Then up the side, we have 42,000, 49,000, 58,000, 69,000. Um, I got to pick a good interval to go by here. If I go by 2000s, I would need so many tick marks to get from 42,000 to actually 70,000. Um, it would take a lot of tick marks there, probably about, let's see, to go to 70,000 be 30,000 different, so divide that, it would be about 60 tick marks. Um, so that's, uh, oh no, 15 tick marks, never mind. That's a, that's a long way to go. Uh, so we want to pick something that's, low, that's higher than 2,000. We go like 5,000, that's better, but we're still going, let's see, 40, 45, 50, 55, 6. Uh, 60, see, we're still going eight. Um, if we go by 10,000s, uh, we're going to be pretty good because notice this is low 40,000s, so this is high high 40s, this is high 50s, this is high 60s. So, um, again, we don't want to go all the way 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So let's, uh, let's use a break one more time. And we're going to start out right here. So we'll go 40,000, 50, uh, 60, we're going to go up to 70,000 because we're at 69,000. Okay? That way I know this is 40,000, 50,000, and so on and so forth. All right, then all this comes down to, guys, you've done this before, plot the dots, just like as if these were ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So I go 1985 up to 42,000. So here's 40,000. I'm going to kind of estimate where this is, right about right there. For nine, 1990, up to 49,000. Right about there. Just get as close as you can. And then you know what to do from here. It's just connecting the dots. Now, obviously the trend here is that over time, Mr. Yi's salary is going up. Now, it says estimate his salary in 1992. We don't have data for 1992. But what we can do is we can use the graph to kind of figure this out. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come to 1992 which is about right here on the x-axis. And I'm going to draw a line, a dotted line, up to my graph. 
So remember what my graph is. My graph is showing the relationship of Mr. Yi's salary to time, that ratio. So if I hit the graph, I can then go over to find the y value that corresponds with this x value here. Um, and that looks like, what, 52,000? Again, it's an estimate. So you might get an answer different from me based on you know how straight my lines are. Looks like my, my line here is going a little uphill. That's OK. Um, but that's one way we can use a line graph to make estimates about data within these values we have. A different type of graph that use lines. Um, we call this a scatter plot. A scatter plot doesn't necessarily have to have time. It just shows the relationship between two sets of data. So for instance, if I increase height or decrease height, what happens to the weight? This one, it doesn't really matter as much uh, whether height or weight goes on the x or y axis. Um, because all I want to do is I want to show the, uh, the relationship. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put height down here in inches. And I'm going to put weight over here in pounds. It doesn't matter whether I put that up, up here or here or if I switch them. Because um, it's still going to show uh, the relationship. So it looks like I've got to go from 68 all the way up to 74 inches. So again, probably would be handy to use a break here. And if I go by twos, 68, uh, 70, 72, 74, probably going to spread those out more, but that's okay. Um, I can plot all my, all my dots here. So 68, 70, 72, 74. Now, for my weight, I've got to go, let's see, my lowest is 160, my highest is 190. So if I go by 10, starting at 160, now I've got dots to plot, and that's it. This is the, this is the exact same thing as a line graph with one major exception, which I'm going to get to in a minute. So if I'm at 71 inches, just halfway between here, I'm going to go up to 170 and put a dot. If I'm at 68, I'm going to go up to 160, put a dot. I want you to notice one thing. In a line graph, we'd connect the dots, right? But notice, I've got somebody who's 71 inches who weighs less than somebody who's 70 inches. And just because I'm 70 inches, does that mean I have to weigh this amount? These dots are just different people. If I'm 68 inches, I could weigh 300 pounds. So these dots aren't necessarily the only dots that could go at these heights. In a scatter plot, what we do is we draw a line of best fit. The line of best fit shows us what's the general direction of the data. It doesn't connect the dots, but basically it runs, you know, you'll notice the data is all kind of going this way. So if I kind of draw my line, so I've got three dots below and two dots above, kind of draw that line straight through the data. The line of best fit is not connecting the dots, it's just showing what direction the data is headed. It's headed upward, and that makes sense. If I increase someone's height, I'm putting more onto them, so we would expect the, the weight to increase as well. All right, so the line of best fit shows that relationship between these two data sets, in this case, height and weight. We call it a correlation. Notice the word, the root word there, relation. How do the two uh, relate to each other, okay? And again, line, of best fit is the line that comes closest to all the points in the scatter plot. Um, so showing, uh, just showing you a couple examples here. We could have strong correlations and weak correlations. Okay? A positive correlation is if they both go up together. So if I increase height, I increase weight. Uh, that would be a positive correlation. Or looking at the other way, if I decrease height and decrease weight, about like negative times negative, that gives me positive. So I have positive times positive, that gives me positive, okay? 
Uh, you can have a weak correlation or you can have a strong correlation. Strong correlation is when all the dots are grouped. This last one was a strong positive correlation. All the dots are grouped kind of along that line. A weak correlation is where they are kind of trending upward, but they're more spread out. So it's not as strong of an upward relationship. No correlation would be like if I said my height and the height of the oak tree outside my classroom. No correlation whatsoever between those two things. A, a negative correlation is when one data set increases and the other decreases. So think positive times negative. Or if one decreases and the other increases. If they're going opposite directions, that makes for a negative correlation. Okay? Um, let's take a look at a couple of these. The size of a jar of baby food and the number of jars a baby will eat. Well, if I increase the size, so if I give, if I put more food in the jar, what's going to happen to the number of jars the baby can eat? Baby can't eat as many jars. If I put, uh, if I put three ounces in Carly's jar, uh, she can eat maybe two jars. But if I put six ounces now she's only eating one jar. She's eating the same amount of food, it's just she's decreasing the number of jars. So one's increasing, the other is decreasing. That's a negative correlation. All right, the speed of a runner and the number of races she wins. If I increase the runner's speed, guess what? Run faster, most likely you're going to win more races. That's positive. One increases, the other increases. All right, the size of the person and the number of fingers he has. If I increase the size, do I increase your number of fingers? Absolutely not. If I increase the size, the other stays the same. That's no correlation, no relationship there. So you see how that works? You think, well, one increases, what happens to the other? We're going to take a look at a couple of those tomorrow. The other way to look at correlation is to actually um, use the scatter plot like we looked at before. Uh, so you can either use the scatter plot or you can look at, um, you can actually just think if I increase one, what happens to the other. Uh, we can do the same thing, making predictions that we did with line graphs. Um, so for this, we're going to predict what well, it'll earn in tips in 10 hours. Well, for this, we've got hours, obviously time on the x-axis, tips on the y-axis, okay? Um, so tips were going from 7 up to 26, okay? So maybe if I go by 5s. And then hours, I go from 2 hours to 11 hours. Notice I don't have 10 hours in there. I go to 12 so that I can include 11 in there. All right, and now it's just plotting the dots. So at 4, I can go up to 12. At 8 hours, I can go up to $20. Notice, if he works eight hours, he's not necessarily going to make 20 bucks in tips all the time. He might make three bucks in tips. He might make 50 bucks in tips. So this is a scatter plot because we, these dots are not the only ones for these values. So what we're going to do, obviously this is a positive correlation. You see the line of best fit. Hopefully you can see that that's kind of uh, trending upward here. This looks like a strong positive correlation. So... I don't connect the dots, but what I am going to do, I am going to uh, go up from 10. I'll go from 10 up to the line of best fit, because again, that line shows the relationship, and then I'll go over. And this is going to give me an estimate, probably about $23, for the tips he'll make in 10 hours, based on the data we've gathered and based on the relationship with that data. Okay? Uh, I forgot again. Title. This is uh, height versus weight of a b-ball team. And then for the first one we did, this is Mr. Yee's salary over time. Don't forget your titles. Um, go ahead and do the quick check and we will practice this in class uh, later. Good luck.